So does order matter? Well, at this point, we should really know that yes, definitely it does matter. So the way, the order in which we do a transformation is going to make a difference in what the function is going to look like. So we're going to do something slightly different here in that we're now going to start with a function here that's already been shifted. Okay, so normally we've been starting with the vertex right at zero, zero, and the nice easy functions. But here we're going to start with a function that's already been shifted and define the function. And we're going to make sure that we understand that once we define the function, it doesn't matter what the function is. It could be some shifted function, could be just some random picture. It doesn't matter. So once we define this function, all we're going to do is the transformations on it. Okay, so the first thing is let's define this function and let's just make sure that we have some reference points to transform. So I'm going to do my original table here. Um, let's do this maybe, I'm going to do this horizontally right here. So let's do X and Y. Okay, and let's just, I'm just going to do three points. My vertex is going to be at negative two, negative one, and I'm going to have a couple points symmetrical format. So I'm going to have zero, uh, that's going to be one, and at negative four, I'm going to have one as well. Okay, positive one. So those are my three coordinates. So these are the coordinates I'm going to transform. Uh, so negative one, negative two, okay, and then one over four up. Okay, uh, wait a minute, let's see, did I get that right? Well, that's going to be negative four, negative four, one up right there, and zero x's, I got that wrong, didn't I? Let's double check this here. So negative two, yeah, so there's going to be negative two and negative one. Give me that point there. There we go. So negative four, and it's going to be zero, one. I kind of messed it up because my, my table's kind of not in a normal way. Okay, so there we go. There's our original function, and we're going to transform this. We're going to do this two different ways. We're going to do our shift uh, down, a vertical expansion, and a flip across the x-axis, so a vertical flip. And we're going to do that in this order first, and then we're going to do this in this order second. So this is going to do shift down first, times by three, then flip, this is going to be flip first, times by three, then down to last. Okay, so we're going to see how this changes our graph. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to write my function notation uh, for this. So it's f of it's on the outside, so I don't need to do anything backwards. I can just do everything directly how it's written. Okay, so my f of x notation is going to be looking like this. So my f of x. Okay, and everything's on the outside, so it's going to be down first. Okay, so I'm going to go minus 2. It's going to expand after that. So I need to make sure I put the brackets around so that the minus 2 happens first. And then flip across the x-axis, going to look like that. Okay, and as opposed to the other way around, so B is going to be flip and expand first. Okay, so that's going to be my flip and expand first and then shift last. Okay, so we're going to get different looking expressions here. I'm going to do the first one over here. So I'm going to make my table of values here for my first transformation. And so nothing happened with my axis. So it's going to be negative four, negative two, zero. With my y's, I'm going to subtract first, then times by negative 3. So that's going to be negative 1 times negative 3. That's going to be positive 3. The next coordinate is going to be negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. And then that's going to be negative 1 times negative 3, which is positive 3. Okay, so on this graph, the first graph, I'm going to draw this in. So that's my vertex, negative 2, positive 9 is way up here. 
Okay, it's going to be negative 4, positive 3, so right about there, and 0, 3, right about there. So there's my new graph. It's upside down. Yeah, it's been vertically flipped. It's been shifted down first. So it went down first and then flipped and expanded by three times. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So what about the second version here? It's done in a different order. So I'm going to need to do a second table of values here. Okay, so all my x's stay the same. So negative 4, negative 2, 0. So no transformation on the x. The y's now, these y's are going to be times by negative 3 first this time and then subtract 2. So times by negative 3 is negative 3 minus 2 is going to be minus 5. Okay, so negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3 minus 2 is going to be positive 1. Okay, so my vertex is going to be there. And then the last coordinate is going to be negative 3 minus 2. That's going to be negative 5. Okay, so there's my coordinate. My vertex is at negative 2, positive 1, negative 4, negative 5, right there, and 0, negative 5. So it's the same shape. So, you know, it's been ver flipped and vertically expanded. Okay, but notice that it's in a different position because the order in which it got shifted and expanded is different. So it's going to give us two different looking graphs. And that's very important to make sure we understand. The order does matter. Okay? And we have to make sure that when we write the expressions that our order is done, is shown in our expressions. And we need to make sure we use brackets if it doesn't follow natural bed mass. For example, number 1 or A. The minus 2 happens first. So we got to conserve that by putting it in brackets Whereas this one here, we do times first. Well, that's going to naturally happen first and shift last. Or bed mass follows what was written up above. Okay. So if we take a look at how we actually put it into the equations. Okay. So again, remember that the, once we establish the table, we don't really care that this was a square root function or the absolute value function in here. But this is what it looks like. Remember, this is my absolute value. So... On the outside, I did minus 2 first, brackets, and then times by negative 3. And if I graph this, I'll get that black graph up there. Here it was minus 2 first, so I take that original function, whatever it was. In fact, it doesn't, this could be anything, right? Once we establish f of x, we don't worry about it in the transformations. So there's our f of x, minus, or sorry, times by negative 3 first, then the minus 2 will happen last. So it's going to give us this red graph over here. 